Hey guys, today I will be doing a video on apparent weight in an elevator or just apparent weight while accelerating. So, what we're talking about, I'm just going to sketch out the situation. So, let's say we're in this elevator. I'm going to draw a nice little elevator. And we've got this scale on the ground. So let me draw that in blue. So I've got this scale. And I've got a person standing on top of the scale. Right? So there's my person standing on top of the scale. Now, there's going to be two. And I've got my cable of the elevator on top. And it's just moving down. So when I talk about apparent weight on my elevator, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle around my system. So if my system is this elevator, I know, and then I'm going to use that system to make a free body diagram. So if this is my particle, right? So if this is, so this particle would represent any, any particle within this system. So within the system, I know since there's a cable here, I'm going to have a upward force of tension and I'm going to have a downward force of gravity. So those are the two forces acting on me at any time when I'm on this elevator. And so when I write out my F net, I'm going to say F net in the Y direction is going to equal my, so let's see, tension is going to be what's positive and gravity is negative. So tension minus force due to gravity. Now let me just exchange a couple of things out. I know my F net in the Y is the same thing as my mass times acceleration in the Y equal to tension. I'm just going to keep as tension. And I know this FG, so if you recall, FG, Newton's, you can apply Newton's second law. It's going to be MG because the acceleration due to gravity is G. So minus MG. If I rearrange if I rearrange this, I'm going to get my tension is going to equal MAY plus MG. And I'm going to go ahead and simplify it even farther to get pull out an M and get AY plus G. Now, this is really important for apparent weight on an elevator. This equation is all you're going to need. This is the only equation you're going to have to remember, or maybe you won't even have to remember it because you would just do this process and get to it on a test or quiz. So what I'm going to tell you, and this is probably in your textbook, or I mean, maybe your instructor has taught it to you, but your tension. So the tension of that cable, that is going to be apparent weight. That's all apparent weight is. It's your tension when you're on an elevator. So I'm going to analyze this equation real quick. I know my mass. So if we remember, mass is not going to change. The mass of your person is always going to be the same because mass is constant. And G, I know G is always going to be a 10 meters per second acceleration because remember, G is equal to 10 meters per second squared of acceleration. Now, it's really important not to confuse G with gravity because gravity is negative G. It is not just G. G is 10. Okay, and so I have those two constants, which I can basically X out because they're not going to be changing my apparent weight at all. But the only thing that is is going to be my acceleration in the Y direction. So if we think about acceleration in the Y, um, Actually, real quick, I'm going to test this equation out to show you guys that it is right. So, first off, my first scenario is going to be free fall. So, we all know, just from our class so far, free fall is weightless, right? You are weightless in free fall. So, your apparent weight should equal zero. Well, let's see if this equation gets to it. So, using my equation, I'm going to plug stuff in. So, I know my mass is going to be constant. I'm just going to leave it as m. My acceleration in the y in free fall, remember, in free fall, my a y is going to be negative g because you're falling with the acceleration of gravity. So negative g plus g. Now, if you take a closer look at this, it's negative g plus g, which is 0. And any quantity times 0 is going to equal 0. So that, it passes the first round of tests. 
And the second round of tests I'm going to do is what if I'm just standing still? So if this elevator is at rest. So when I'm at rest, I would expect my tension or apparent weight to equal my actual, um, actual weight due to gravity. So how weight works is your weight is your mass times the acceleration due to gravity, right? And apparent weight gets altered a little bit because we have this acceleration. You're moving either, you're either accelerating upwards or accelerating downward. So at rest, I would expect my apparent weight to equal my actual weight on Earth. Now, I'm gonna say actual weight with quotations. I don't know how to show that on the camera, but because actual weight will change whether you're on, a moon, on the moon or on Earth, dependent upon the gravity. So my tension should equal mg, and I'm going to test that out. So it's going to be m times my acceleration in the y direction. If I'm at rest, remember, will just be 0. So 0 plus g. So that's going to be mg. And this checks out. So now we're going to get into the equation, and we're going to see what it means. So what if my acceleration is negative, or I am accelerating downward. So if I have a negative acceleration in the y direction. If I have a negative acceleration in the y direction, this quantity is going to go down. And that means it doesn't matter. I'm always adding a constant. So if this quantity goes down, my apparent weight goes down. So negative a y is going to equal to a um, decrease in apparent weight. And now let's do it for positive a y. So if I have positive a y, this quantity is going to increase. G is going to stay the same. M is going to stay the same. So my apparent weight will increase. Now, relating this, so this is kind of the main. So if you want to take away just one thing from this video, I would take away this just as like memory based. But this is the concept behind it. And I just wanted to show you the concept to further your understanding. So there's that. And now let's relate this back to the elevator problem. So on my elevator, I'm going to make a quick matrix over here. I'm going to say my elevator is moving up or down, right? Those are the two directions an elevator can move in, up or down. And now it can be slowing down. So slowing, right? Or it can be speeding up. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. So it could be slowing down or speeding up. So if on my elevator right here, if it's moving up and if it's slowing down, that means my acceleration and velocity will have to be pointing in opposite directions. So in my up, my velocity will be pointing up, so my acceleration must be pointing down. And we know from back here, if my acceleration is pointing down, I should have a decrease. So I'm just gonna call that D. Actually, you know what, let me make it in a different color. So if I'm moving up and slowing down, my velocity is upward, acceleration downward. If my acceleration is downward, I have a decrease in apparent weight. Now, if I'm moving down and I'm slowing down, so if my velocity is downward and I am slowing down, that means my acceleration is upward. If we go back here, if my acceleration is positive, it is an increase, so increase. Right, And now, last couple of ones, so if I'm moving upward, velocity is upward, and I'm speeding up, my acceleration is upward, then there is an increase in apparent weight. And finally, if I'm moving down, velocity is down, my and I'm speeding up, my acceleration has to be down. If I have a negative acceleration, I have a decrease in apparent weight. So... On your test, I would encourage you to use this formula and just you will be able to fill stuff in and get a decrease in apparent weight or increase. Or you can memorize this grid. You know, whichever way works for you. I just displayed three different techniques you could use. And hopefully this helped and thanks for watching.